looks kind of like a weapon. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Felicia and today we're going to talk about a little bit of a new purchase that I made, not the camera. That video is coming very soon. If you guys don't know, I purchased a Fuji X-T3 and it doesn't have inbuilt image stabilization. So I decided I finally needed to pick up a video head for my tripod, something that was lightweight that I could take with me pretty much anywhere. I had the legs, I just needed the head. I didn't want to go out and buy a whole new system. My Manfrotto legs do absolutely great. And I didn't want to lug around my Benro BV-10 because that that's way too big for what I've got. So I decided to do a little bit of research into what would suit me and knowing what I was doing, which is pretty much just YouTube because all of the jobs that I do, I hire out equipment. I decided to go for something on the cheaper end of the scale, which I thought you guys might be interested in if you're looking for something a little bit more budget friendly. I decided to go for something that is below the $100 mark and I managed to find this particular tripod head on Amazon for 74 Australian dollars, which is really good. But I did want to make sure that it was a good fluid head tripod before purchasing. There wasn't a hell of a lot of info on it and there wasn't a lot of stuff on YouTube about it. So I thought maybe making this video might help some people who were in my situation a couple of nights ago who had no idea what they were getting themselves into. That's not to say that I don't put effort into these videos or into the equipment that I use. I really do love doing this sort of work and it is a lot of fun to go out and film these videos. I'm just saying that there's no real point in investing that much money into something that is going to be used very lightly. Especially if you're gonna take care of it, it means that the quality of it is gonna last a lot longer. Even though it is something on the cheaper end of the scale, you're gonna get a lot more life out of it unless you're using it for a professional circumstance because if you are, it's gonna get knocked around quite a bit. Anyway, okay, today we are going to do a little bit of a review, I guess. I'm gonna give you the pros and cons about this particular tripod head, which is, I've written it down because it's way too long, the Niwa heavy duty video camera tripod fluid drag pan head with quarter inch and three eighths inch screws sliding plate for DSLR camera video camcorders shooting up to 11 pounds slash five kilograms in brackets aluminium alloy close brackets. Yeah. So as I said, I found this little one on Amazon and it was 74 Australian dollars, which is an absolute steal. And having a look at the contents, the description and the reviews, which there was only one of them. It was four stars and I thought, well, what could go wrong? A lot could have gone wrong in hindsight, um, but I didn't really think about that, to be honest. For $74, you're getting something that is pretty freaking good. The outside, the exterior is all metal, except for the latches, which are plastic, which I'll get to in just a moment. The pan handle has no give. It's actually really quite solid on there. It's a rubber ended handle, which is quite nice. I will say though, that when I was attaching this handle, I was a little bit concerned about over tightening it because the plastic in the middle of the teeth where it attaches to the tripod head did creak and crack and it was something of concern to me. In addition to that, the plastic latches are a little bit scary to work with because I am worried about breaking them and I can see that they are the first thing that is gonna break on it. That's why I do hope that Niwa do supply or offer replacements for these things. There is a one year warranty on the tripod head so you can actually activate that at niwa.com and they'll be able to, I assume, send you replacements if that happens within the one year. But after that, I'm not too sure what your solution would be. But yeah, I was kind of concerned about all the latches being plastic, but especially this tilt axis, it did make a little cracking sound when I used it the first time as well. Now, all of these sounds might be because it's my first time using it and it's just working its way into it, warming up, if you will. But who knows, I could be accidentally over tightening it. So just be a little bit more careful with it. But aside from the plasticky feel of these latches, they're actually surprisingly good because they're all ratchets, which is a high-end product sort of feature, which I am really impressed is on this tripod head. They are all ratchets. So if you find that the latch is a little bit too close to the camera body or too close to whatever might be impeding it from tightening further, you can simply pull it out, move it back to where you need it, where you can get movement and then tighten further. I'm just really impressed that they put something like that on a tripod head so cheap, which is 
it's a really good feature. I'm, I'm really happy about it. In terms of movement, the tripod head actually does have really nice, smooth movement. One downside I did find is that the tilt axis is really nice, but the pan axis, although it doesn't have any bumps or anything in it, is a lot more firm, and there's no way to adjust that tension, which is a little annoying because Having it that firm makes it a little difficult on a lighter weight tripod with a lighter weight system to get a smooth shot. You also won't be able to make any quick movements as a result because of that, because of that flaw. But you know, that's all right. You just have to think about your shots a little bit more carefully and maybe not do those sort of things. And if you needed to do those sort of things, those very quick whip pan movements, maybe you need to look at a different product. An immediate concern I had when I first got it out of the box is Everything felt kind of loose. I'll explain that in this footage that you'll see now. When I started to pan, I heard it creak and crack and then it came apart. And that was because all of the Allen key screws that were on the base of it and on the bottom of it, holding everything together, were loose, every single one of them. So I had to go through and tighten all those myself just to make sure that everything was gonna stay together and not fall apart, which is, eh, I don't know. <laughs> Kind of makes me think that everything will fall apart eventually or everything is going to work its way loose gradually over time, which makes me think that I need to carry these Allen keys that they provided with me all the time. And uh, you know what? I, I carry Allen keys with me a lot when I'm on set because they're very handy things to have, but it's not something I want to be taking around with me. Like if I'm just going out for a YouTube video, it's not something I want to be carrying with me or worrying about more like it. I mean, maybe I'll carry it with me, but I don't want to worry about it. But the simple solution to that is when you do notice that they're coming loose or if you do notice that they're coming loose, you can Loctite them in, I guess. Being very careful about where you place that Loctite, but yeah, you can Loctite them. The slide plate is really good. It's quite sturdy. Again, it's made of metal. It's got rubber strips on the top to help with it gripping to your camera. It is a little bit cheaper. It does have a lot of give in it when you're sliding it on. So you have to be really careful about the angle that you kind of place it on. If you put it on a little bit of an angle, it could get wedged or it could damage that base plate. So just be really careful with that. But otherwise it's really sturdy. I didn't find any movement of the camera when it was on there. Everything seemed to work perfectly fine. It's even got a catch at the front as well with a lock. So your camera will not slide completely off the front if you accidentally forget to tighten it. Now, like every single tripod head out there, there is a spirit level on there as well which doesn't have a light in it, but you know, for $74, I'm happy with that. Another thing that kind of made this a little bit on the, the cheaper feeling side of the scale was the fact that this sticker here, this branding sticker was coming off. It was half off when I pulled it out of the box. I didn't actually get it caught on anything. It, it actually just came out of the box like that. It just kind of made it feel a bit cheaper though. But then again, it is really, really cheap, so. What do you expect? Now at the base of it, it does have a 3 8 thread there, so you can attach it to any tripod that has a 3 8 thread coming out of it. But if you do find that your tripod is something different, like it's a quarter inch, you do have an adapter, which they provide as well, and you can pop that in there and it becomes a quarter inch. So yes, this tripod head is packed full of features despite its price and despite the uh, cheaper elements to it. It is really good, nice, high quality for its price and I would recommend it for people who are looking for something on the cheaper end of the scale or are not necessarily gonna be using it a lot or alternatively are doing small things like YouTube where you don't really need something high end to achieve the same result. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Nice and short one today, but if you did enjoy it, please remember to give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my face and learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process, Remember to subscribe and I'll see you later. Huh. Huh. I feel like a tomahawk. I probably shouldn't throw this around because it's probably going to break. Or I'll break something. <laughs>